Hi boys and girls. So hopefully you've gotten to watch a little bit about the artist Vasily Kandinsky. He was born in December, six, he was born December 16th, 1866, and he died December 13th, 1944. He was a Russian painter and art theorist. He believed that music is the ultimate teacher. When I say he's an art theorist, that means that he didn't just paint, but he actually taught art at the Bauhaus, which is a very important art school, and he taught advanced art theory. So not necessarily about making art, but about how artists think of art. One of his most famous quotes, music is the ultimate teacher, really applies here because music, I think at least, really does touch the soul. And he wrote this, colors on a painter's palette evoke a double effect, a purely physical effect on the eye, which is then charmed by the beauty of color, similar to the joyful impression we eat, we get when we eat a delicacy. This effect can be much deeper, causing a vibration of the soul or an inner residence, a spiritual effect in which color touches the soul itself. He often used music as his inspiration because everything he was theorizing about and writing about really did connect to music as well. One of his most famous pieces, his concentric circles, were all about how color played off of other color and how color together affected the soul. So today, boys and girls, we're going to be working on our own version of concentric circles. The idea here is that there's really no right or wrong color combination. We've learned a lot about color theory, primary, secondary, warm colors, cool colors, analogous colors, colors that are similar. Opposite or complementary colors, colors that are different. Neutral colors, colors that aren't on the color wheel. But today, we're surely gonna play with them, the way Vasily Kandinsky would have. And he made similar things to see how color resonated in our soul. So this is your chance to sit back, really have fun with color, and hopefully you've already watched and learned some about our artist, Vasily Kandinsky. Enjoy, have a great time. we're gonna dive on in and make some of those circles. So if you noticed, each of those circles were in its own square or box. Since it's sort of hard to fold paper that you might have at home into squares or boxes, we're, we just wanna fold it evenly. Here's one that I've already folded. I have eight squares. I'm gonna show you how to fold this one. You're going to take your two corners and your long edge and you're going to match them up. Match up your corner, corner to corner, edge to edge, hold it down, pull your hand back, make a crease. This crease is for you to see. You're going to need this for your guideline, but you don't need to trace it or draw on top of it. So make sure Maybe you've taken your fingernail and ran over it so that you can really see it. There, can you see the crease? I can. I'm gonna fold it back though, and I'm gonna fold some more. To make things easy, I'm just gonna fold it in half again. This time, I'm going shortest ends to the shortest ends, corner to corner, edge to edge, Hold it flat on the table, hold with one hand, pull your other hand back, and crease. Boys and girls, if you're using thicker paper for this like I am, this is where it starts to get hard. 
You can use any kind of paper you'd like for this because we're gonna be using either crayon or oil pastel, whatever you have. We're not gonna be getting the paper wet. Thinner paper is easier to fold, but art paper might hold your color a little bit better. So now I have one that looks like this. If I open it up, I would have four pieces. I don't want four, I actually want eight. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fold it short edge to short edge one more time. Match up my corners, match up my edges, and I want to hold that down. Once it's matched, hold it straight flat on the table, hold it down good, pull your hand back. Oh man, I'm really pressing now. It's a lot of paper to fold. Rub that nail across it if you need to. Get a good crease in. Oh, I did it. When I open this up, I should have eight squares and I do one two three four five six seven eight if there's another way that you know you'd like to fold it go ahead and try that Vasily Kandinsky put cir concentric circles into squares mine are not quite squares they're rectangles but if we don't have a tracer or template this is really the easiest way to do it now, you can do this on larger paper. It might take you longer, but I promise they will come out absolutely beautiful and might be frame worthy. So, the next thing we need is a circle. Now, boys and girls, do not stress out. There's circles everywhere. Right before I started taping, I just took a walk around my house. I found the stuff I use on my skin. Mrs. Cavallo. What are you doing using stuff on your skin for a Kandinsky drawing? I'm glad you asked. I'm actually not using the stuff inside at all. I just want to use this circle to trace because it fits in my square. And this can be any size, boys and girls, as long as it fits in a square. And we're going to use it the same on all of them. Please make sure you get your parents' permission to use something as a circle before you just take, you know, grandma's vase and stick it on your vapor. Don't get in trouble. So I'm using my face toner to make a circle on my paper. I'm going to do that seven more times. Try to get it into the center of each section the best you can. Notice that my hand that doesn't hold the pencil is holding down my face toner or whatever you're tracing. And my pencil, I sometimes need to go around and then pick it back up. That's fine if you need to do that. Or if you need to turn the paper around, whatever works for you. Now for this, it really doesn't matter how hard you press your pencil, but you do want to try to get that circle in the center. Does anyone else notice they make funny faces when they draw? If I'm making them, I'm sorry. I think all of us artists do that. It's okay. And guess what? No one can see you. You're making art. It's fine. So here are my eight circles in my squares. I hope you can see them with the pencil. Um, now we're going to go for the color part. Time for part two. Time for the color. So for this you can use whatever you have. Again, I have my son's twistable crayons, which I like a lot. Um, he likes them too, so I don't want to use them all up on him. Um, I have some, also have some regular plain old crayons here with lots of colors. If you have oil pastels, that works really great too. You can get some really vibrant, bright colors and they go on really strong. If you don't have them though, that's okay. I don't have any right now. 
and I think mine's gonna come out pretty good. So we've been learning about color. Vasily Kandinsky loved to experiment with color. So that's really all this is, is a big color experiment. What do different colors look like together? There's really no right or wrong here. But while you're working on it, I do want you to try to remember some of those lessons we learned about color, the color wheel, warm colors, cool colors, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and similar, colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel and very different. And we can even use those colors that are not on the color wheel, called neutral colors. Feel free to use brown and black and beige and gray. You can add those in here too to see what they look like next to the color wheel colors. So I'm going to start with this really beautiful yellow orange. I'm going to start first by just going over my circle that I traced. Now this is where your circles do not need to be perfect anymore. I actually, if you notice, I keep going around and around because I want there to be color on the inside and the out. I want my color to be pretty thick. That's the other thing that you can experiment with on this lesson. You can make some colors really thick areas of circle and some colors thinner. That's fine. I'm going to stay with this one box for now and keep working on the same one. Now, depending on the size circle you have, you might have a lot of space inside your circle to fill or you might have a lot of space outside your circle to fill. Either way, we're going to fill it up. Here's how it works. I just used that yellowy orange color. I want to choose a color that's a little bit different, so I'm going to go for a purple color. They're very different. They're almost opposites. Yellow and purple are opposites. This time, I'm going to start by filling in the inside of my circle first. I really don't want the paper showing. I don't want a lot of white left on this. So I do want to take my time and kind of get that colored in. Remember, how thin or thick you make each color is up to you. I really like that combination of purple and the yellow orange because we know yellow and purple are opposites. They're not close to each other. But now I'm going to experiment and on the other side of my purple, I'm going to put a similar color. Hmm. What sits next to purple on the color wheel? What's similar to it? Oh, there's this blue. So I'm going to keep going. Now I'm going to add this deeper blue. It's almost an indigo. And add this guy to my circles. I'm just going to keep going, boys and girls, in combinations that I like. For example, I love this magenta pink. Let's see what it looks like. Am I making silly faces again? Yeah, we all do when we work. It's okay. It means we're thinking, or that we're not thinking and just being creative artists. I love that magenta. This time I want something very different though. So that's how we experiment. Is it similar? Is it different? Sometimes you have a lot of thoughts on it maybe, and maybe sometimes you don't. I'm going to go all the way and fill that in now. So now that circle that I have traced is completely filled in from the outside, from where I traced, inside. Now we're going to do the opposite. I'm, I can take the similar colors or different colors, continue to experiment, and build it out.
I'm gonna go around the outside now of that first yellow orange color we used. And I'm using that same lime green or yellow green that I used in the center. You can repeat colors and see what that looks like. Does it look good when you repeat the same colors? Maybe you like that look, maybe not so much. Hmm. I also, I like this lighter blue. I haven't tried this one yet. I'm gonna use a different color. And this time, I'm gonna do a color outside that yellow green. Now, boys and girls, yellow green and blue are pretty similar. They're close on the color wheel. They're not too far apart. They're like neighbors. Only these neighbors can actually touch. Like they're shaking hands or hugging. Like I said, I can make my circle as big or as small. I think I want to make this blue, because I really love this light blue, a little bit thicker than I already have. By the way, notice how fancy schmancy I am. I have my pinky out. And I'm just gonna keep going around to make that a thicker circle. Now I used a blue. I'm gonna try an orange because the opposite of blue is orange. So this one should be very different. Now the only thing you might wanna be a little bit careful of here is if you don't want brown, if I'm putting an opposite color like orange next to blue and I'm using oil pastels, which I'm not, but maybe you are, or even if I overlap my crayons, that orange and blue might give me brown. For this, it's perfectly okay. You can use brown. You can use any of the neutral colors. So I like that orange right next to it, but if you notice, I'm starting to hit the, the edge of the paper here and the crease of the paper here. So on the other side of the crease, that's for this guy. So we're gonna stop. And what we're gonna do is color and pretend that the circle goes on. So now that I filled up from side to side, I'm gonna pretend like I'm still making circles, but I can't actually make the full circle. I'm gonna take my red, Remember red and orange are similar, they're analogous, they're friends, they're neighbors, they're next to each other on their color wheel. And since I can't really go past the fold and since I definitely can't go past the edge of the paper, I'm just gonna bring it to there. Again, how thick you wanna make each color is totally up to you. Maybe you want a lot of a color, maybe just a little, that's fine. I'm gonna pretend the circle goes around though, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now I'm definitely running out of room to make a full circle. So I'm just gonna keep making these sort of semi-circles until I hit here. And you'll see what happens then. I'm gonna start reusing some of the colors though, because I already have a lot of beautiful colors. Hmm, let's go back to that indigo color. I like that one. By the way, if it's easier, you can just simply turn your paper around and pull the color towards you. I like working that way. I think I move a little faster when I do. Don't be afraid to move the paper and make the artwork for you. It's your artwork. You're the one in control of it. You're in control of the paper. You're in control of how you use your materials, how hard you press, how soft you press. Now, I have to say, 
I press pretty hard to get these bold colors with these twistable crayons. Good thing there's plastic because I have some strong hands and they might be broken. Now, in the art room, I would tell you it's perfectly fine if it breaks while you're working. I break crayons all the time with my strong hands. At home, you might want to press or go over it just a few times. I don't know if you want to press so hard you're breaking crayons. It does happen though. So if you do experience an accident like that, don't get upset. You can always peel back the paper and use another half. Again, I don't have that problem with these. They're twistables, but I am finding I'm pressing very hard. Once again, whatever you have to use will work for this project. I'm gonna go in with a nice bright green. I don't think we've used this one yet. And again, I'm gonna keep going. Now just making semicircles and pretty soon I'm going to hit some edges again. So I'm going to show you what we do then. Hmm, that looks pretty beautiful. I really like that green. Now, ah, let's go back to that magenta. I like that combination. So I'm going to use it again. Remember, don't cross over into your next circle's area. You want to leave that for your next circle. Again, I just turn the paper because it's easier for me. Don't make your life hard. Life's hard enough. Up, oh, I'm now touching that bottom crease. Can you all see that? So I know I'm getting near the end of making my semicircles. So let me show you what to do to finish off a section. So now all that I have left are these little corners in this section. So you gotta get you to see that. See how I just have the corners left? So with rounded color, you're just kind of gonna keep doing the same thing, but make sure you do the same color on each four. So for example, mm, let's find a good color. Mm. Oh, I was talking about neutral colors. How about a brown? Why not? I'm gonna put my brown here. I'm going to skip and put my brown here. One, two, three, four. Great. Actually, I should open this back up. Much easier to color. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Now I'm going to go back to a bright blue. Same thing. One. And I'm still kind of curving them. Two, three, four, and it looks like I might have room for just one more color. Hmm, what was my favorite? Oh, I like that lime green. Let's go back and finish with that, the same one I have in my center. Does it matter that I have my same color in the center and at the edges? I don't know. We're experimenting. And that's what Kandinsky did. So now I'm just going to fill in all the way through my corners. But remember, same color. One, two, three, four. All right, boys and girls. My hand is tired. I only did one. I have eight more to do. Now. When I've done this in the past with students, I've used Royal Pastels. Today, I used my son's twistable crayons. Markers I really don't recommend for this. And the trouble with paint is that your colors will mix. So you don't get to experiment with what they look like together. What will happen instead is you'll be experimenting with how they mix together. When you put wet paint next to wet paint, 
it tends to mix. But I do have a lot more work to do. So you don't need to sit and watch me work anymore. Go make some art yourself. Have fun creating.